Okay, hello, fifth grade. Um, this is Miss G. Um, live for me. This isn't going to be live for you guys by the time you see the video. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you in class. I know I'm definitely going to be missing you guys. But we will see each other Friday for a fun Friday. Um, let's begin. Okay, let's begin social studies today. Uh, like I said, it'll probably be a little bit shorter considering... Um, it's just me here. I can't really have conversation or ask questions. But I do expect you guys to still be prepared for, you know, as if we were in class. Um, I expect you guys to sort of uh, be attentive, you know, be aware, be awake, right? Because like I said, our fun Friday is depending on this. Um, you know, don't don't make us lose our fun Friday and even fun Fridays in the future, okay? This is sort of a, a really big test, um, testing to see uh, just how responsible you guys are, um, and once again, how respectful you are. I'm really depending on you watching this lesson. So let's begin. Yesterday we finished off in social studies um, learning about the horses, right, and and how they sort of changed the life for the Plains people, okay, the Lakota. And remember I said that's sort of like uh, a tribe within the Plains people, so today we are going to get into detail about exactly what the Lakota is because they kept, we kept mentioning it, right, and it, it mentioned it in our books, but we never actually learned what it is. So today we're going to learn that together. Um, we had our homework and our data graphic. I'm looking forward to grading those. Uh, I hope you have all completed them. They were due today. So please make sure um, that that was in or that is in, okay? Uh, and you will have your grades on those probably by the end of the weekend. So let's begin, okay? So we're going to talk about the Lakota today. What is the Lakota? So they are part of the Plains people, okay? So they're kind of like the Haudenosaunee. So remember the Haudenosaunee was five tribes, but they were often grouped together. So this is sort of what the Lakota is. They were one out of the three groups um, of Sio, okay, or Sioux. I don't really know how to pronounce this word here. Um, they were living on the Great Plains. So basically the Sioux is the group of tribes, of the three tribes like the Haudenosaunee, okay? So the Lakota was one of the three. Um, and the Sioux were known as the Plains people, what we're talking about. Um, they lived in the Black Hills, okay? So the Black Hills are basically a sacred place to them. Um, what they literally called it um, means the heart of everything that is, okay? That is being, okay? So it's a it's the heart, right? And everybody knows that without the heart, we can't live. So it's the most important part of their culture. Uh, in the Black Hills, they had their social gatherings, right? Their parties or their, their maybe their festivals or ceremonies and stuff. And then they also had their religion ceremonies, right? Sort of like how we gather in a church. They would gather here in the Black Hills. That was where they practiced their religion. So let's talk more about the Lakota, okay? So the book really mentions that they had, they were big on training, which I thought was really interesting. And they had specific things that the boys learned and that the girls learned from a really, really young age, the book says. So the boys were given bows and arrows as toys, even when they were just babies. And then the older that they became, the boys, you know, the older that they got, they would get bigger bows and arrows. And then eventually they were also taught uh, how to how to you know hit moving objects with their bow and arrows so probably by the time they're your age right they probably have pretty pretty big bow and arrows and they're probably already learning now um, I think they start training when they're around age four so that's really early so by the time they're nine and ten they're already hitting moving objects which I thought was pretty cool um, the important thing that the that the Lakota people value, and this is going to be something that you might want to write down, okay? This sounds like a very, hmm, um, a test question, right? A question that might pop up on your test, or even a question that I might ask you tomorrow um, about, you know, what what did I talk about in the video? You know, tell me, tell me, what are, what are some of the values in Lakota people, okay? So hint, hint, this might be something you want to write down. So there were four, right? Courage, fortitude, wisdom, and generosity. Fortitude basically means strength, okay, both mentally and physically. So those are the values that they, you know, they valued those the most in their kids, in their adults, in, in their entire culture. Um, how they showed courage, which I thought was interesting in the book mentioned, was basically their test to show just how courageous you were, is that you would be able to touch an enemy but without killing the enemy. And the way that this worked was sort of like with a, it was worked with a special stick, okay? It's called a coup stick. 
So this is a vocab word, right? All of our highlighted words here are vocab words. Um, and coup literally means to strike or hit in French. But in their language, it means war count, okay? And so I put sort of, I put a question here. So if any of you know what fencing is, right? It's almost like sword fighting. But the way that you win a fencing match is the second your sword touches your enemy, that that enemy is out and you win. So that's what it sort of sounds like, right? They want to be able to touch their enemy with their stick and whoever does that wins. That's that's what we can just maybe imagine in our head. And I included a picture of acoustic and what it looked like for these tribes. And I thought that they were pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about the girls. What were they trained to do? So the girls were taught how to prepare buffalo hide. So the, the book mentions hide a lot. That's just another word for skin. So that might be something you want to also write down just because, you know, when you're reading or you may be doing homework or eventually, you know, studying for an exam and you're like, wait, what is hide again? Um, it means skin, basically. The book says hide, but I put it here. Um, what it means, it means skin. So they were learned, They were taught how to prepare that, okay? They learned how to prepare that. They would sew the skin together, and um, they also learned how to erect the teepee, basically, how to build the teepee. And that is another vocab word, and we might all be familiar with what a teepee is. It's a cone-shaped tent, right, in the, in the shape of a triangle. We've probably seen those before. Um, and they, they're, they create them by leaning them, leaning the poles together, tying them up at the top, and then covering them with animal skin. And remember, we learned that the Plains people in the Lakota were very dependent on buffalo. So we can assume that it was the buffalo skin, okay? This is what the, the girls were taught at a young age. They, were also lear they also learned how to cure, okay, which basically means prepare the meat. Um, prepare basically means, you know, we add our seasonings even today, right? We put salt, our spices, whatever they had back then. That's what the girls learned how to do at a young age. Lastly, they also learned how to search for herbs, okay? They were the gatherers. So the men were likely the hunters and the women were the gatherers, meaning that they went out and they looked for berries, for herbs, and all of that stuff. And remember, we learned way early on that Native Americans would use those things for medicine or for food or sometimes for clothing, right? When it got really hot, they would make certain cloth out of, out of plant um, fibers and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And there's a picture of our very typical teepee. So next, the book talks about this thing called the winter count. Um, it's actually just a fancy word or their word for calendar, okay? And there was a special calendar. It basically kept track of their important events. So I can't remember who it was in class. I don't remember even if it was 5A or 5B. But somebody asked, you know, how do we, you know, how do we know about all of this stuff, right? Like, how does our book know about it? How are, we, how are you teaching us, Ms. G? Well, here's a really good example. And it's how, how, um... How perfect is the timing that this comes up, you know, right after having that question? Um, they marked, you know, they, they, they wrote everything that was important down in something like this in a special calendar. These all represented events. So this is one of many winter counts, okay? And you can see each symbol symbolizes something. Each drawing symbolizes something, an, a different important event that happened to this tribe. Um, each winter, basically, they would meet. The tribes would meet, uh, and they would choose an important event that happened that year um, to put onto the calendar. And sometimes there would be a lot of important events, you know. Maybe they went to war and then they made peace. They might include both and include them on that calendar, okay. So that's why it's called the winter count, because they would meet in the winter and they would count up all of their important events and put them on buffalo hide, on skin. So right here, if you could see in this picture... The outer areas, that's skin, okay? This is that was their version of paper. They didn't have paper yet, okay? I know paper can be made from trees, but they didn't know that. So what they did was they would use whatever they had, and that was buffalo skin. So they would they would make these calendars on the skin. And they were a red counterclockwise, okay? So the opposite way of a clock. Okay, so that would go, if you can see my mouse, it would go this way, right? Because the clock goes this way. So they would read them like that and go around and around and around in the swirl. Um, some of them had up to 200 symbols, so they were pretty, pretty big. Um, and that meant that there were just a lot of events that happened, okay? Um, and so what I want you guys to do is look at page 72 in your textbook, okay? In your free time, either now, okay? If you have it in front of you, that's great. Go ahead and open up. And look at what that winter count looked like. So your book provides you with what a winter count looked like, okay? What the special calendar looked like. 
And that one specifically shows that the Lakota interacted with a lot of other people that year, okay? They had a lot of different encounters with different tribes, maybe um, maybe the Spanish, right? Because that's who got, gave them their horses. Whoever it was, they basically, it's basically showing that, um, that they had a lot of encounters. And the really cool thing about this is that there are people who actually for their entire lives, right? They studied this. They studied what these symbols mean. And then they were able to tell, you know, the people who make our textbooks, the people who, you know, give us our education, both you and myself, right? As an adult, even. They are the ones who sort of tell us what all of this means. So without those people who, you know, study that for their entire lives and dedicate their entire study to that, uh, we might not know everything, right? And there still might be some symbols on here that they haven't figured out. And, you know, it's it's it's, mis it's mysterious, right? But it is really interesting to think that each of these symbols tells a, a mini story that creates a whole, you know, a much bigger story. And I'm sure there's so many special calendars, you know, um, out there. Okay, so lastly, we're going to end this lesson. Okay, this is the last part of the lesson um, with the importance of buffalo, okay, and what, what, what it meant to the Plains people. So I we mentioned it a bunch of times, right, throughout this week, but I just had to put another slide, and your book even has a whole entire section, just really emphasizing and making sure everybody understands just how important the buffalo were to these tribes, okay? Basically, their existence depended on them. Without the buffalo, they wouldn't have survived, okay? It is central to their way of life, the existence of the buffalo. So in 1700s, right, and think about this. I couldn't believe it when I read this. I was like, what? Uh, there were 30 to 70 million, okay, million buffalo roaming the Great Plains. And like I said, that's all the way from Canada to Texas. But millions, I mean, we're talking about millions of buffalo just hanging out. Um, and so that was why it was perfect for the Plains people to live where they were, right? They had, an, they had what felt like an endless amount of food. Um they loved the buffalo and they depended on them so much that there were dances, stories, and songs dedicated to buffalo, okay? They were grateful for this creature that, you know, gave them life. Um, so let's talk about the different ways that they used them, okay? We've, we've, we've talked about this briefly, but this book goes into detail. So for the first thing, right, they obviously used the meat. Um, so after a hunt, the women and children, so remember the women were gatherers, the men were hunters, um, after, the, you know, they would go and hunt and find the buffalo, the women and children would help bring the buffalo to camp, okay? Because they were huge. I mean, look at this picture. Um, and it had to be cut and cured, right? Given the spices and prepared immediately, okay? Very quickly, otherwise it would go bad. Um, what they would do is they would make sausages um, out of the meat or they would roast the meats, you know, over just a campfire on one of those spinning wheels, right? Um, or they would boil it in a pot of water, over a campfire with whatever vegetables they had farmed, okay? Um, they also would also, they would also um, slice up some of the meat and hang it to dry in the sun on a sort of rack, okay? And this is, this is how jerky was invented, okay? So I thought that was pretty interesting, right? The dried meat is called jerky. So I don't know about you guys, but I love Slim Jims, okay? I love beef jerky, right? It's the same thing. That's exactly what they would do. They would make their own homemade beef jerky. And they did that by hanging slices of the meat right after, you know, they, you know, skin the buffalo and cut it open. Sorry, it's a little graphic. But after they would do that, they would hang it and the sun would beam on it and it would dry, okay? And that's how they got their version of, you know, beef jerky or Slim Jims today. Uh, another way that we uh, take it, you know, take advantage of their access to buffalo is by using its skin, okay? And the skin would provide both clothing and shelter. So how it worked is the women and children would prepare the skin by scraping it off, okay? So skinning the actual animal. Once again, it's a little gruesome, but the book mentions it, so it's got to be, it's got to be presented to you guys. And they would skin the animal. Uh, they would rub it with a certain mixture, um, with like fatty mixture. Uh, and they would wash it in the stream, okay? So that way, you know, now the skin is cleared from all the blood or whatever's on there. Um, they would soften it by sort of like kneading it, right, with rope, pulling it back and forth and sort of kneading it like you would knead dough. You know, you'd push it in. Or like Play-Doh, you know, you really push it in with your hands. That's what they would sort of do to soften it. And then once it was softened, uh, it could be made into whatever they wanted. Clothes, you know, they would make their shoes, bags, purses, stuff like that. 
or the covering for a teepee, right? Because remember, we talked about how the teepee has this sort of layer outside. And this is actually, when I Googled this picture, I looked up a Lakota teepee. So this is buffalo skin right here in this image. That's exactly what they used. And they would put that over the teepee and, you know, they would have their homes. So they could use the skin in many ways. Um, and no part of the buffalo was wasted. So they were very grateful to their for their access, you know, to their access of all these buffalo. So, I mean, they would take advantage of it and they would use whatever they could um, to, you know, use to survive. Um, so they would use the horns right here for, um, they would make spoons and cups and toys out of the horns, okay? And, you know, they would shave them, carve them down, do what they had to. Uh, they would use their bones, right, uh, for tools and weapons, sharpen those or carve them to whichever way they need and use them as tools and weapons. The tails on them would be used for brushes and whips, okay, um, to whip, you know, let's say the horses. You're going to have to whip the horses or, you know, I don't know, if somebody gets punished, I don't know really what their, what their stance is on violence. But, you know, or even in war, right, they would whip, I don't know, uh, but they would make them for whips and brushes, okay. And then even their stomach and intestines. Here we get real, real nasty. Okay, I'm sorry about this. But they would clean the stomach and intestines and they would use them almost like bags and buckets to carry water, which I had never heard of. Um, and I was really surprised to learn. So that's not until Friday. Don't worry about that. But yeah, so here we go. That was the importance of our buffalo. Okay, so we are fin we finished our lesson on the Plains people. Okay, uh, it was kind of a big lesson, not too big. Um, so make sure you're reviewing, maybe read your book um, when in your free time, right? Um, just to make sure you fully understand. Then if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me. It's pretty basic stuff that we're talking about here in social studies, but um, definitely a cool lesson. There's a lot of stuff about buffalo um, that I really didn't know, like, that I mean it's nasty but the stomach and intestines part really blew my mind I, I couldn't believe it so there we have that <laughs> um so let's get into ELA um so ELA today is actually going to be extremely easy because I realized that I sort of depend on us meeting live right I mean we read together and stuff like that I'm not going to read a story to you online um it's just not going to work that way. So it's going to be extremely short, shorter than usual. But um, we're still going to, you know, go over some important things that um, we need to talk about. So we did that, right? We, we briefly talked about idioms. That's exactly what we're going to go over again today because I feel like um, some people might be a little bit confused. And I'm hoping to clear it up. Okay. So here we are, week three, day three. So I still wanted to do a warm-up. I want you guys to take a wait, maybe... 30 seconds, probably less because I'm impatient, for you guys to take a look at this and come up in your head with what you might think um, needs to be corrected. Okay, yeah, that probably wasn't 30 seconds, but... You get the hint, right? You get the gist of it. So I'll read it out loud just so you can hear it, right? We saw either a crab and a lobster on the beach. Charles chased it or tried to grab it. So at first, this one's a little tricky, right? First, it might not seem like there's anything too wrong with it. Nothing too obvious, right? All the capital letters are there. Um, the punctuation is there, right? Um, the spelling isn't wrong. So what? what is what is it, Miss G? What, what needs to be corrected? So... If we look here, we're saying that we saw one of two things, right? We saw a crab, a lobster. But it, it's one of the two. It doesn't say we saw both, right? It doesn't say we bo saw both a crab and a lobster on the beach. It's saying that we saw either. So we saw one or the other, right? That's sort of what either implies. So we saw either a crab or a lobster, okay? So this would be or, when we have that word either, it means basically we have one thing or the other and we never have both. Okay, if it said both, then we would have and and that would be okay. So, we saw either a crab or a lobster on the beach. I can't remember which one. Okay, either. Whenever you have an either, you have to have an or. So, think of that together. Okay, those two words always go together. Okay, 
Uh, so let's look at the next sentence. Charles chased it or tried to grab it. So here, right, it's not saying that, you know, it's one or the other. It's basically sorry, saying he chased it and then he tried to grab it, right? So that would be and. Don't mind my terrible writing. You guys know this from live class that Miss G is not the best at that. Okay, so it would be and. Charles chased it and tried to grab it, okay? It wasn't Charles either tried to chase it or grab it, or Charles either chased it or he grabbed it. I can't remember, blah, blah, blah. It's it's a statement, right? There's no either there. So it's saying that he chased it and then he tried to grab it, okay? I'm hoping that makes sense. Uh, if we have to go over it, that's fine. You know, we have class on Friday to do so. Um, and we can, you know, get a bit more practice with, with ands and ors, okay? So let's go over some things. I have some announcements to make, some review. Um, don't forget, I'm hoping that by the time you're watching this, you've already turned in your Define, Ask, and Example homework um, that was due today, okay? You've, you've had two days to do it. Um, remember, you have to have a Define and Ask an Example for each word, so I, I should have a lot to read, okay? Um, also, this is important, so I hope you are listening and you haven't fallen asleep yet. If you are watching this, um, to prove so, I would like for you to do the following, okay? I would like for you to go to Teams. I would like for you to go to General. And I would like you to start a post, okay? And I want your post to answer this question. I don't want it to be I watched the video. I want it to be one of these two things. Would you rather um, be able to be invisible, right? Have that be your superpower? Or would you rather have the ability to fly? One of the two. Okay, so if you're still watching this video to prove to me, Ms. G, um, that you're a responsible student um, and you're not, you know, just saying, ah, I'm not going to watch it and I'll just show up for fun Friday and she'll never know. Okay, um, this doesn't mean you aren't going to be asked questions. This just means that it'll give me a good idea on who has made it this far and watched. And this doesn't mean to not keep watching because, like I said, we're still going to be asking questions. Um, but go ahead and do that. Um, do that now. Um, or do it right after you watch. I don't care, but make sure you do it, okay? Um, and then I also want you to review your vocabulary for Monday's lesson, okay? Uh, the vocabulary like anxious, um, all of those words. I can't remember. The decipher, right? The ones we sort of played Kahoot on yesterday. Um, 5B played Kahoot. Sorry, five. I mean 5A played Kahoot. We had extra time. Sorry, 5 be but um remember the, the 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 vocab words that you had to do for divine ask example okay those are the ones i want you to review because on monday we are going to read um another long story kind of like the kojo one and it's going to include these words and i would like for you guys to have at least an idea of what they mean so that you're not extremely lost okay so let's talk about you know, remember i said ela is extremely short lesson um this is basically one of going to be one of the only things that we talk about um, well, actually, is going to be the only thing that we talk about. Uh, we're going to go over idioms, okay? So remember, um, we brief, like I said, we briefly talked about it yesterday, but we didn't talk too much about it, okay? So I want to make sure that everybody can, you know, understand to the best of their ability. I want to give it another chance to explain. So remember, an idiom is a common phrase which means something different from its literal meaning but can be understood because of their popu popular use, okay? So remember, like I said, um, don't make a mountain out of a molehill, right? You would be like, what the heck does that even mean, Miss G? You know, um, a mountain is something that's big, a molehill is something that's small. Basically, don't make a big thing out of something small, right? That's what it means. Um, but literally, you would say, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. That's not possible. You cannot fit a mountain in a molehill, and those two don't even make sense together. What are you talking about, right? Looking at the individual words in an idiom is not going to help you to understand it um, as much as you think, okay? You have to sort of think of it from a different point of view. Don't look at it literally. So let uh, we'll go over a few. Um, so because idioms can mean something different from what the individual words literally mean, it's difficult for someone not good at speaking the language to use them properly. So if it helps you, um, pretend in your head that you don't speak English, right? And you're new to you're new to the United States culture, culture, and you you know you don't speak English at all. And if somebody said some of these these things, 
when you're starting to learn what the words mean, you would think, well, that doesn't make sense. I thought that, you know, this word meant this and this only. It's like, oh, well, you can use it in different ways, you know, when you're, when you're using an idiom, when you're meaning it differently. But somebody who's literally learning the language wouldn't know that, right? They would get confused. They would think there's only one meaning. But to us, there's like these secret little meanings of these words um, when we use them in certain phrases, okay? So let's look at this. So we talked about yesterday, right? He's full of himself. If someone who didn't speak English, you know, and they're learning the language and saw that, they would be like, full of himself. What does that mean? To be full means to, to not have hunger. He's not hungry of himself. What does that mean, right? But to us, we know that it means he's conceited, right? Or he thinks he knows everything. So that's an idiom, right? It doesn't literally mean that. It has a sort of other meaning that is not, you know, known to everybody. Um, or even I'm all ears, right? Have you ever heard somebody say that when, when you know, when you're saying, hey, I have something really important I got to talk to you about. They might come to you and say, okay, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. If you think about that, literally, you would be like, what? I'm all ears. That doesn't make what? Like, and you, you're starting picturing and imagining these weird images of somebody covered in ears from head to toe. And it's creepy, right? But I'm all ears means that you have my full attention, right? I'm listening to you. Go ahead. I, you know, I'm all ears, right? That's an idiom as well. Uh, the last one I thought of was probably a pretty good one too, right? Getting cold feet, you know. Um, hey, uh, you know, this is often used in marriage. I don't know if you guys watch, you know, romance films, but when somebody's supposed to make a big decision or like, you know, somebody's supposed to get married, right? Someone might say, oh, she's getting cold feet, right? She's getting nervous. Um, her feet aren't literally cold, right? Your feet aren't literally cold. You're just you maybe second guessing a big decision or you're getting nervous about it, okay? Doesn't mean your feet are literally cold. If I told somebody, oh, I'm getting cold feet, you know, if I'm talking to this person who's barely <laughs> learning English, and I say, oh, I'm getting cold feet about this big decision, and, you know, that person touches my feet and says, oh, your feet are pretty warm, I'd be like, excuse me? Like, that's not what I meant, obviously. But, you know, somebody who doesn't know the language might not know that. They don't know the culture and the language, okay? So that's what idioms are. They sort of, they don't mean they're literal, you know, words. They actually have a different meaning, Okay. Um, and the way that you guys can sort of figure these out, and you might get confused um, in, in stories, is is through the context clues, right? Um, reading the other hints. Or maybe, you know, you know them so, you know, so easily. Like, even when we did the example, I said, guys, find the idiom. And, you know, you, you were like, she's full of himself, or she's full of herself. Might have not stuck out to you because you're so used to hearing that. You don't even think that it's an idiom, okay? But because, you you know, you've heard it so much. But for somebody who, who, you know, barely knows English, they might think, what the heck does that mean, you know? And thinking about it now, right, thinking about it through that sort of lens and idea, yeah, hearing she's full of himself doesn't really make any sense, okay? Um, and that's sort of what idioms are. They might be so, you know, we're so used to hearing them, we might not even realize that they're idioms, okay? But it is important that we sort of get a, a little bit better of a grasp because a lot of stories moving forward are going to have them. Um, they might be included on your test, right? Um, we are eventually going to have tests in ELA. Um, not, you know, the big state tests, but, you know, the ones that I'm going to give you. So idioms is a big concept that I probably would include, okay? And if you guys don't understand it, it's fine. I get it. It, it is kind of confusing. There's some stuff that doesn't really, you know, it gets a little confusing. And that's fine. Even I, as an adult, sometimes struggle with idioms and you know how to explain them really because it is a it's a weird thing to to you know have to explain but they exist okay and it's important that we know what they are so that you know we're not getting too confused moving forward okay so that is it okay let's get out of here thank you guys for for joining me um in our short short video don't forget that if you watch this video, make sure you answer that question. Would you rather be invisible or have the ability to fly? Um, also, be honest. You know, don't tell your friend that you know didn't watch the video. Hey, just say you'd rather fly. Because if Ms. G, you know, if I call on them on Fun Friday and they don't know the answer um, to a certain question, right, um, then, then we're going to lose our Fun Friday over that. So please, please, please make sure everybody's watching the video. Um, I hope you had, guys had a nice day off from seeing me. I will see you tomorrow for Fun Friday. Don't forget that it is Dress As Your Obsession Day. It is going to be a fun day. We're going to play a few games, do a, a quick review, and um, hopefully have a really good weekend. Okay? So I'll see you all on Friday at the same time. And thank you for watching the video. Have a nice day.